Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Today is Friday, September 8th. And it's not very common that our company has a Friday wedding, but today we have a Friday wedding. Now my partner Scott made a behind the scenes video kind of similar to this where he talked you through the day and I liked that format and I kind of wanted to give it a shot. So like I said, it's very difficult to film behind the scenes stuff when you are on the job to film the wedding. Does, does that make sense? It's hard to film yourself filming. And I did my best to try and get some footage of the day, but what I'm going to try and do right now is walk you through the day a little bit and talk about the different ways that we do things, especially from a second shooter's perspective. So first things first, Starbucks. Did you ever get a um... Yeah. All right, after we made the 40 minute drive from where we live down into Philadelphia, we arrived at our first location of the day, which is always the first location of every single wedding, Bride Prep. All right, we're just arriving on location now. We just arrived, I believe we're in Ambler, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Philadelphia. That's how we start all our wedding days. Bride Prep is first on the list. Am I looking okay? A little put together here? I feel good. So whenever we arrive at a bride prep, our first job before jumping into the prep is to take care of detail shots and establishers. In this particular scenario, we didn't have a lot of time before I had to leave for groom prep, so we took the time to take care of the details right away. This includes basically where Scott, as you can see, is moving with the camera while I'm actually holding a light, and I'm usually lighting things like the dress, rings, shoes, bracelets, earrings, anything along those lines. Once we finished up with those details, I actually left bride prep and I headed over to groom prep. So with our company, and I think most companies, we have a main shooter, and that's always been Scott. Uh, and then every time we shoot a wedding, I'm always the second shooter. Now the second shooter is incredibly important in aiding the main shooter in doing everything that they need to do for the day. All right, just arrived at groom prep. I've got a Lumix GH5 with me with a 50 millimeter. I have a 70 to 200 if I want to get real, real like bokeh depth kind of looking effect. And I have a monopod. I've got a couple batteries with me as well and I'm ready to go. I'll see you in there. Now with groom prep, I'm always really, really busy in there because I'm the only shooter for that portion of the day. But what I did do was I took a couple shots like on the screen of the camera just so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm really looking for every time I do a groom prep. So what I always do right when I jump in there is I always get associated with the guys. I jump around while they're hanging out and I get a lot of different sequence shots. Sequence shots are super important. If you don't know what that is, all that means is that there's the same shot from different angles, minimally three at least. And that really helps to, to move around and, and really set the scene when you're putting the film together. But once I actually jump into the prep portion, I always look around in the location that I'm at and I try and find like a window or, or a door or something that allows natural light to come in. And I make sure I, I do my best to shut off all the lights that are inside the place. So as you can see here, I really like to go for that dramatic look. That's something that Scott and I have established that he really taught me well. It's just in preps, it's good to go for that dramatic look where, where the person is, is being exposed to the natural light coming in from the window or the door and everything behind them is actually rather dark so that you're not really paying attention to anything except the person that is the subject or the person that you're filming. So as you can see here, this is like a tight shot of him getting his tie on. I really like to get nice and close and if I can't get nice and close, I have a 70 to 200 that I use and I can get a little farther out and I use that lens to get in really close and, and really get that compression and, and, and it looks really, really nice. And that's actually the lens that I was using for this particular shot right here. So as you saw right there, I went from tight and I went out to as far out as I could just so I could get the same shot but from two different angles. And it's actually technically the same angle but from two different focal lengths. So it looks different and I can jump from each shot to get the same thing going on through the film. One thing I really like to do is I like to get a shot of somebody helping him with his tie or with his shirt or, or whatever because that really, really uh, just adds a different dynamic than just him alone. Now if it's somebody of significance to them like a sibling or a parent or like a best friend or a best man then I like to get them like helping them with their jacket or different things like that. Not too staged, but just something that's kind of natural, something that allows them to, to, to work in, work that in. One other type of shot I like to get in prep if I have space is I like to get silhouette shots. So I like to get shots where there's like a window and the people that are in front or my subjects are very like dark and they're not well lit, but you can see through and you can see the movement and that's what a silhouette shot is, is and I love to get that just for a different perspective. Obviously, I like to get shoe shots as well. I like to make sure everything is clean. I don't wanna see any wires or I don't wanna see anything, uh, you know, in the background that's like a, you know, 
an outlet or anything like that. I like to keep it really clean. If I can find a clean spot that's lit, I like to do that as well. And so as soon as we finished up groom prep, I got everything that I needed and me and Scott met up and we actually drove into Philadelphia. We drove through a rather interesting part of Philadelphia, to be honest with you. For what, for uh... But once we got through that, we got through the traffic, we ended up getting to a church that was huge, a really nice church in Philadelphia that was super grand looking. Take a look at this place. The place is awesome. But regardless of that, I'm always on this exact shot that you see me of here. I'm always on the left hand side. So if you're looking at the front of the church from the back, I'm always on the left hand side. And I'm always looking and I'm tight on the groom or tight on the people that are speaking. That's always usually my job is to be tight on all those people and I use a 70 to 200 to do that. Now Scott's usually running around, he usually has a different camera and he's different getting motion shots and he's using usually our, uh, our glide cam that we use. And then there's always a safe camera on the right hand side that's getting a wider shot of everything that's going on. We're always mixing and matching, we're always doing our best to get different stuff in the ceremony, but right now we have a nice system that we use and we really like doing it. We had our audio ready, we have two mics, we always have one on the officiant, one on the groom, and we have one that's always on the pulpit where the people talk from. Now as soon as we finished up there, Scott had to head to the reception and I actually got into the limo with the groom and the bride and one of the photographers and we headed out to do a separate shoot for about 15 to 20 minutes in this park. It was pretty cool. Music back over here. We do, right? Yeah. Then we got back in the car and we headed right to the reception. I gotta get in behind you. No, I just have to Thank you, sir. Lab. So I'm, I'm not, I, his size doesn't bother me. Hi, hi. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Well, thank well, you. Thank you. Right when I arrived, Scott was already there getting establishers. Yo. We had to set up everything for the reception. Now this place was pretty cool. It's pretty big, really nice venue right in Center City, Philadelphia. But one thing that we always do at receptions, now there's a ton of things that we do and we make sure we cover all the bases. But one thing that we always do for dancing, for speeches, for all these different things is we use lights. Something that we never used to do back in the day, but we do now, we use lights and we make sure our subjects and what we're shooting is lit and it's lit well. Let me show you what I mean. So as you can see on the right hand side of the screen here, there's a balcony. Now on that balcony, there's a light stand, if you can see that. Now at the top of that stand, there's two lights that are temperature control, so you can actually you know, set the temperature and you can set the intensity of the light. But what we do is we try and get the light as high up as we can, shooting down on the people that are dancing, and then Scott and I are always filming from three different directions with that light. We never shoot with the light. You never wanna shoot with the light coming from the light. You wanna either shoot right directly at the light, like from far away shooting at the light. You wanna shoot like Scott is through the light on the other side or, or the same on the opposite side, the other direction as well. Never with the light, but any of the three other directions work great and make our dancing shots, our speeches, everything look really, really, really good. Like I said, it's really difficult to, to film ourselves filming you know what I mean it's it's not the easiest thing to do but what we want to do me and Scott we're talking about is we would like to start bringing maybe like an assistant or two to actually film behind the scenes stuff so in other words while we're doing our work they'll be right there filming us and we can actually talk to the camera you know guide you through things and and show you how we do stuff but I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, I didn't cover all the bases of today because I didn't get footage of everything that we did, but I tried my best to get some stuff so I could help you uh, walk through the day and, and hopefully help you in some type of way. Like I've always said, Scott and I are here. We always wanna bring value to you. We wanna help you in anything that we do. So if there's any questions or any concerns or, or anything at all, please comment, message, You know, find me on Instagram, whatever you gotta do, and I would love to help you. I'd love to direct you in the right way. But hey, I hope this was helpful. I really appreciate you being here. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys, have a good day.